no. X clingers, sour 16, and never been kissed. <laughs> now you know I'm hey, crazy. Jamie, right. Jamie Farr, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Can I take this off now, Dick? I, I think you ought to leave the earrings no, no, on. No, no, no. Ooh, I forgot my ears are pierced. <laughs> Come on, we're gonna, we're gonna walk slowly down here and run this cameraman over. They've set us up with a nice little thing. Jamie, you're probably the only man in, in television that's known for trying to get out of the Army for how many years now? Four years. We'll be going into our fifth season uh, next year. Go for King Clinger. What was the thing Clinger. He, Clinger he did the other day with the tree? I didn't see the episode. What oh, was the was premise? That was a show where I tried to get out as a tree. And uh, at the end of the show, I, I would have made it, but a dog discovered me. So. <laughs> <laughs> this whole thing. Did you really think that MASH would run this long when you started? No, I'll tell you the truth. I had been in failures most of my life. I'm like a 20-year overnight sensation. And the longest I'd ever been on a show was 13 weeks. You know, I'm like Tim Conway. That's about as long as I go on any television series. Were you always a comedian? Were you a serious no, actor? No, I started out as a serious actor at the Pasadena Playhouse in California, in, uh, in Pasadena there. And it's closed now. But uh, what, I what sort of out, thing? I, I did uh, King Lear and Morning Becomes uh, Electra and Outward Bound and things like that. But I guess with a face like this, people started laughing. So I figured I'd better do something funny. I love this I thing, though. Down. Well, what was he? He went to Alaska recently. What was the reason why? Uh, CBS uh, affiliates uh, asked me to go up there to Anchorage and Fairbanks. And uh, the, the entire state of Alaska has about 300,000 people. And Anchorage is about 140,000. And uh, Fairbanks is about 40. And then the pipeline, the camps that go up there all the way to the Arctic Ocean, they are the third largest city in Alaska, 20,000 people. You had to be a national hero. I was terrific. Can you imagine being out there and people knowing who you are in the middle of the wilderness? <laughs> hey, Klinger, right, where's your dress, Klinger? What were you doing in Washington? Oh, Washington, D.C., I was invited there. I went to, and had lunch at the White House. And it was very funny because everybody again said, where's your dress? You know, at, at the White House, they said, look, I didn't want to wear anything that might clash with Betty Ford. <laughs> said, Plus, uh, one first lady in the White House is enough. I'm going to turn you over to my friends over here. They've all watched you on television, and occasionally we have people stop by from uh, situation comedies, stand-up comedians, and so forth. Who's got the first question? Where are we going to start? Over here? Uh, I don't have a camera over there for the moment. Yes, I do. All right, you're OK. What's the question? And kind of holler out. Okay, um, do you pick out your wardrobe for Clinger? Do you pick out your own wardrobe? No, I don't have that bad a taste. Uh, <laughs> no, actually what happens is the wardrobe is usually in the 20th Century Fox wardrobe department. And uh, I, some of the outfits are made. I'm probably the only person in Hollywood who's an actor who has his clothes made in ladies' wardrobe. I have a, a mannequin out there that, uh, that they used to dress that on. A vision of loveliness. Another question from this side over here. Yes, sir. Has the role of Klinger caused you any embarrassing moments? Has that role caused you any embarrassment? Yeah, it has. Uh, I'm very happily married to a very lovely uh, woman. And when I go shopping for her around Christmas time or on birthdays, I'll be in a women's shop and I'll be buying dresses and people will be looking at me and I'll say, I swear it's not for me, honestly. Look, <laughs> I wear a size 14. See, this is a size 9 and 10. I'll prove it to you it's too small. I'll try it on. <laughs> Over here. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to know what's your goal in life. Say, say it again. Huh? I'd like to know what's your goal in life. What is your goal in life? Well, I think my goal in life would uh, to enjoy the success that I'm experiencing now and eventually wind up with my own uh, television series, maybe a variety show, uh, maybe a, a American bandstand when this man gets too old. Hey, wait a minute. There's a picture on the screen over there. I forgot to show yeah. those. What were all of those? Can we, can we look at some of those sure. slides and stuff? What, what, oh, that's a vision yeah, of loveliness of ever. Guard duty, uh, that's uh, one of my pink outfits that I wore at Easter time. <laughs> See, I'm happy about it. That's my uh, Lawrence of Arabia outfit there. I, it's my, one of my negligees that I have. Oh, that's a, that outfit is really awful. That thing has got sequins on it and beads, and it, it weighs like 50 pounds at the end of the day. Uh, it really is heavy. You walk on quicksand, you go, oh. Well, there, now that's a straight picture. Yeah, that, I was doing the greatest story ever told, and I played one of the apostles in the, in, the, in the feature film, and Robert Blake, who does Beretta on this network, was my roommate. And uh, I met my wife during the, uh, at this time, and we got married, in, and I was in this beard, and I'm of Eastern Orthodox faith. And you can imagine when that priest was marrying us, oh. and he saw Jesus and Mary and all the cast members <laughs> sitting out in front. He got so nervous, he started drinking the sacramental wine himself. Jamie, you've had a fascinating career. We wish you lots of continued good luck with MASH. I've got to, I've got to warn you now, in about two minutes, this whole audience up and leaves. Oh, they do. And it's nothing it's personal. Nothing that I've done. No, they're, they're, they're ra waiting to run over there for the they're Bay City Rollers. All right.